So yeah, thanks for coming. Um, before, I, before I get going, actually, I need to remember I have to stand in front of this. Um, before I get going, um, uh, just to let you know, this talk's sort of uh, just whistle-stop tour of Drupal 8 from, from a DevOps perspective, you know, potential deployment challenges, new things in Drush, that sort of stuff. So if that's not for you, filter away. I won't be offended. But just so that you know, we're not going to look much, at, in fact, we're not going to look at all at the front end of Drupal 8. Um, so, my name's Greg. Uh, I work for a company called Code Enigma, um, uh, Drupal developers. Uh, I tend uh, to work mostly on the support and hosting side of things now, so hence me talking to you about this today. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we've, uh, by way of an introduction, um, we've actually been looking at hosting Drupal 8 for about a year now. I don't know, I see quite a few faces were here last year, um, we actually had Drupal 8 up and running on, on production servers at the last Drupal Camp Northwest, and we were handing out cards. Uh, and it kind of almost worked, um, <laughs> but it, it didn't work very well. So it was actually quite a relief that only one or two of you signed up, <laughs> because without Drush, um, which was the biggest problem at the time, um, none of the deployment stuff could work very effectively. So, uh, so yeah, it was a big fat frowny. Um, so before I, before I crack on into um, the differences and, and, and how we go about hosting Drupal 8 and, and what the new challenges are going to be, I'll just let you know um, what our stack is, uh, what we're actually running predominantly on our machines. Um, they're all centrally managed, um, and they, we manage them with, with Puppet, which you may or may not be familiar with for the configuration stuff. Um, and uh, essentially, they're still running Debian Squeeze, which is Debian 6. And I know Wheezy Debian 7 has been out for quite a long time, but the problem is we still have to support Drupal 6. And um, that means we've still got to use PHP 5.3. And that means that that's an absolute pain to get working on Wheezy, because Wheezy's got, I think, 5.4 out of the box, maybe even 5.5 .5 now. So we're a bit stuck on, um, on Debian 6 at the moment. We're just working on backporting um, Drupal uh, 5.3 uh, to uh, Debian 7 so that we can move on. Um, we use Pocona for the database. Um, who's heard of Pocona? Yeah, most people. So it's, it's just one of these drop-in replacements for MySQL. Um, and uh, you could put it in the same basket as MariaDB if you like. There's lots of benchmarks on the internet about which one's faster and all the rest of it. We've tended to settle on Percona simply because um, there is definite you know, performance advantage to using it, and it feels like it's just a bit more professionally run than Maria. It's easier to get professional support. It's easier to uh, um, install. They they maintain sort of better packages and stuff like that. So. That Maria is equally fine. Um, as I said earlier, we're stuck on um, Debian 6 because we need um, PHP 5.3, which we take from the .deb um, repository. And uh, we use a version of Nginx um, 1.2.3, uh, which actually we keep a few Debian packages in our own um, package store, um, our own repository. Um, because one of the things that we do is we use LDAP to sort of centrally manage all of our customers' <coughs> users. And so we have to compile our own version of Nginx with LDAP support so that we can actually have all that sort of stuff work. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's essentially what we're using. Um, so if we start to um, talk about Drupal 8, well, the first thing you're going to do uh, is installing things. And the first issue that we ran into uh, was that our um, Nginx configuration, of course, if you're using Drupal on Apache, I don't know what the split is from a, between Apache and Nginx in this room. If you're using Drupal on Apache, there'll be a .ht access file that comes with Drupal, so it will have been tidied up to, to um, allow access to certain files and deny access to certain other files and things like that. We don't use um, Apache, we use Nginx. Nginx doesn't support .htaccess, so what we have to do is mirror the .htaccess rules 
um, that come with Drupal into an Nginx configuration file. And so the first thing we hit upon was that we uh, tend to block install.php from the web UI. Um, and even if you don't, it's actually moved. So even if you've got rules set up in Nginx to allow that to pass through, uh, it's actually moved to slash core slash install.php now. So um, you may need to uh, update configurations to handle the new um, installer path. Um, there's quite, uh, well actually there's not so many changes in the file system, but the file system's uh, obviously you know, quite an important um, part of, of Drupal. Uh, in Drupal 7, as most of you probably know, um, the whole thing basically just kind of sat in, in, in one web route. Um, and the application, your web server, only really needed to write to directories in the sites directory within Drupal. So you'd have site slash, if you had a multi-site, you might have site slash foo.com slash files. You might, if you don't have a multi-site, it's probably just site slash default with your settings file in and then, you know, and files in there as well. But essentially that's all there is to it. So when you're actually configuring your site, um, all you need to do is make sure that that uh, is available. Um, now that's actually still the case um, for Drupal 8 because um, who knows anything about the CMI initiative in Drupal 8? People familiar with CMI at all, configuration management? Yeah? For those of you who aren't, um, in Drupal 8, uh, there's a new way of storing the configuration for Drupal modules and core in code, in, in files in a format called YAML. Um, and obviously for that to work, Drupal needs to be able to read and write um, to and from the directory where your CMI configurations are stored. So the way they've handled that so it works out of the box for most people is that they've made CMI work in Drupal's files directory. So, you know, as with Drupal 7, if you've made sure that site slash whatever your site name is or default slash files is read and readable and writable by the web server, then you won't have a problem. CMI will just work because it'll sit in there. But that's potentially going to be an issue for you if you're a development company or an individual who wants to manage, take advantage of the features of CMI to actually manage your configuration in code. So you, it's probably not desirable um, for you to actually check your files directory into your Git repository because you don't want um, all the JPEG images and PDFs and stuff like that that your customer <coughs> may have uploaded and test data. You don't want that in Git. There's no point. It's silly. So most people that do Drupal deployment at the moment will deliberately ignore in their repositories the files directory. <coughs> but if you ignore the files directory and CMI is writing into the files directory, that means you're not staving your config um, in, in, in your version control system, which you probably want to do. Um, fortunately, they thought of that. So this is uh, an excerpt from the current, I say current, the latest um, Drupal 8 settings.php. Um, it's, it's there in the settings.php file if you, if you uh, download Drupal 8. And you can set um, your config directories that CMI will use. Now, I have to confess, I, I tried this and it didn't actually work. So <laughs> you've got to remember that, that Drupal 8 is still very much in a state of flux. But uh, what you will be able to do ultimately, um, and probably already I was probably just doing something silly, um, is set these uh, active directories and staging directories to use other paths. So well, what does that mean? Well, in our case, we actually, um, our repository structure when we have a, a, a project is we have a www directory which we put Drupal in. And what we'll probably end up doing is something like having a config directory that's outside of that, point Drupal at it using the config directories array and settings.php, and that will allow us to actually um, commit our configuration files to Git without um, having them uh, sitting in the files directory, which would be problematic for us because we don't want the files directory in Git. Um, so you can move it, which is, which is going to be fundamental when it comes to deployment. Actually, while we're on this point, I mean, there's whole other talks about CMI, but it's worth noting that um, CMI has basically two configuration directories where it keeps YAML files. 
The active one is the one that the Drupal application is controlling, and it's reading and writing to and from all the time. So if you go into admin and you change some setting in a form, it'll get written back to the YAML file that's sitting in the config active directory. Right? So you don't want that inversion control either, because that's going to be changing all the time according to the conditions of the live application. The one that you do want in version control is this one config staging directory. That's the one that you can write config into as a developer and then import it uh, at the point when you set your site up. So obviously, uh, we can take it as read that um, if you alter that path away from the files directory, like we're planning to do, then you just need to make sure that the web server can both read and write to and from that path because it's absolutely crucial that it can read and write from the, from the active config directory. And I've jumped ahead of myself. I've already said that. Um, for deployment purposes, keep the staging directory in version control, not the active directory. So what else? Um, I mentioned earlier uh, when we were uh, just, I was just talking about the differences between Apache and Nginx. Um, I mentioned, obviously, that the, with us running Nginx, we have to try and mirror the .hd access file that comes with Drupal in the Nginx configuration. So it's worth having a quick look at that and diffing those two files and seeing what new rules we need to, to, to catch up with Drupal 8. Um, there's not many changes, actually. Um, the includes directory, where you've got, you've always had traditionally, you know, menu.inc and, and common.inc and bootstrap.inc, that's moved to slash core slash includes, so that's an update that you'll need to make if you're running something like Nginx. Um, there's um, new rewrite rules that are part of HD Access. They're not actually necessary to replicate. It's just for user experience, that is. Basically, if you go to slash install like you used to, the HT Access file that ships with Drupal 8 pushes you on to slash core slash install so that people aren't just given a 404 and, and get confused. So that's more of a user experience thing, but you might want to, to replicate that. Um, and there are optional um, rules for additional security that are actually documented in the HT Access file, but not enabled by default. And that's just these lines here. You'll find them if you go and look at Drupal 8's um, uh, .ht Access file. And as it says there, uncomment the following two lines to only allow PHP files in the web root and slash core to execute. Um, so you may or may not want to replicate that. If you've got libraries that are PHP files that you're relying on because of modules or whatever, then you might not want to do that, or you might want to extend it so that it allows more PHP files than just web root and core. And I believe there's another example in the .hd access file to help you do that. Um, but that seems to be pretty well documented in the HD access file, just, just making you aware of that. It's possible to tighten things up um, if security is of a concern. Um, another cheap sysadmin trick is to hide all the TXT files from the outside world because you don't want people, you don't want your application to be div divulging too much information about itself because if there's a known vulnerability, somebody could exploit it, right? So you probably don't want things like changelog.txt to be sitting there telling everybody what version of Drupal you're using. Um, so we actually tend to block TXT files, um, the, the main core TXT files in WebRoot by default, they've all moved to slash core as well. So you'll have to update that if you want to continue to block those um, information files. So um, on to uh, Drush. Um, what works? Well, I'm, I'm very pleased uh, to say pretty much everything works. Now, unfortunately, I've had to swap computer because for some reason my computer doesn't um, play nicely with, with VGA. And so I'm borrowing very kindly borrowing um, Phil's computer. So I don't have the VM that I was going to bring forward to show you Drush working. But <coughs> it is actually now, if you download um, the latest master version of Drush from GitHub uh, and install it on your computer, it seems pretty stable. And it is working now pretty much across the board uh, with Drupal 8. So I've done 
Rush SIs, you know, cache clears are fine. I've done a ULI to, to get a reset link for the admin user so I didn't have to remember what the password was. Just usual kind of stuff that you find yourself doing as you're administrating a Drupal site. And I've not yet found anything that doesn't work. So that's great news because that's a massive, massive change from this time last year. And this time last year, it didn't work at all. Yeah. Drush SI kind of worked. Drush CC was broken. Um, there was all sorts of problems with it. But one of the uh, one of the interesting things about um, CMI is actually uh, what's new. Um, this has actually screwed up the formatting. But um, with the CMI and the config management stuff, which is going to be really important, obviously for for Drupal eight, um, even not just from a developer's perspective, but from a DevOps perspective. Uh, and there's a load of Drush commands that come with that. And these are now core in the latest version of Drush for Drupal eight. So you've got a config edit. Again, I was planning to demo these, so I'm sorry about that. But you've got a config edit command, which uh, basically um, allows you to just say drush config edit, and then any of the config files that are there, and it'll automatically open it in your default terminal editor, so you can make some changes and save it without actually leaving um, without actually leaving the command line. <coughs> um, config export. Um, allows you to, well, export your config. So it takes everything that's in the live active directory and copies it out to staging so that you can potentially then commit it back to a repository or tar it up and send it to somebody or whatever you want to do with it. Um, you've got config get, um, which is pretty much config edit without the edit. It's just like catting the file. It's not, uh, not particularly useful. Well, it's just handy. If you want to quickly look at a, a config file, you can just, you can just do a drush cget config file name and just, oh yeah, okay. Um, config import is probably the biggest deal from an automated deployment perspective because the workflow that we imagine, um, that we're in the sort of process of thinking about and testing, is that your developers will be committing the staging directory into Git. You probably have Jenkins or something similar building your applications onto the server. They'll be checking out that staging config directory, probably somewhere you know, reasonably close to your web route, but not in it. And at that point, you're probably going to have an additional new step, which will be config import Drush CIM um, to actually say to Drush, pull in all of the stuff in the staging directory and make it the live configuration. So I think that's going to be, that's going to be a very key command there, um, just CIM. And config list, CLI, is, is just uh, uh, gives you a list of all the available config files that are currently known to this Drupal 8 site. So if you can't remember the name of something or you're just curious about what's there, config list will just give you a list. You can grep it to get all the views, ones, or you know whatever. Um, so that's, that's quite useful. Uh, that last one there, config set, I haven't really played with yet. Um, I don't quite understand what they mean by this comment in the documentation. This does not invoke config sync change because I don't know enough about CMI to actually know what they mean by that. So I intend to ask a question of Alex Pot when I next see him and say, what's this Drush C set thing about then? Because it doesn't sound like it quite works. <laughs> so uh, uh, I, that remains to be tested. But uh, it looks like it could be useful for just quickly setting configs from the, from the command line. I, I don't know might be like a sort of equivalent to CMI for a variable set for CMI or something. Um, but yeah, that's to be investigated. So yeah, so I mentioned this. Um, the only thing to remember at risk of repeating myself is that your active config directory um, will be run by the application. Your staging config directory will be where you keep your um, copy of um, your configuration that you want to keep in code. Um, and the Drush CMI command is the one that you use it to bring it through. So another thing um, that's obviously going to be very important in, in Drupal 8 is caching. Um, where are we on that? Well, APC is up there. Opcode caching obviously doesn't care. I mean, uh, I don't know if the APC module for Drupal has had any work done on it yet? I suspect not. So APC as a page cache is probably nowhere. Uh, but APC as an opcode cache, in principle, it should still work 
as planned. There probably will be some need to tweak the amount of memory available um, to APC. We haven't done a great deal of work into working out what that number needs to look like yet because it's premature. You know, the things are still changing. Um, there's still uh, meta issues um, up on Drupal.org that are being tackled um, to try and deal with, with the, the latest um, performance problems as they're found. So, you know, memory usage is still in flux, but once that settles down, as we get closer to a Drupal 8 release, we can start looking at, at how much memory something like APC needs to make Drupal 8 run efficiently. Um, memcache, I was amazed to discover there's already a Drupal 8 version. Um, oops, oh, I tried to click the link, that didn't work. Uh, um, that link there, I'll put the slides up on SlideShare after the talk and, and, and post a link, but um, that link there basically takes you to a thread that says memcache module needs to support cache tagging. Um, has anybody, um, oops, has anybody actually um, seen any of the CMI talks around cache tagging and what that means and what it is? No? Okay, so, so, so cache tagging basically uh, allows for much more granular um, categorizing of cache in Drupal 8 um, than you could ever do before. So by way of an example, I think the node module, when you save a cached node page, you probably save it in the page cache, but you probably tag it with the word node, and you probably also tag it with the node ID. What that means is that you can start getting really, really specific. Instead of saying, right, I need to clear the page cache, you can say, I need to clear the cache for node 618. And using cache tags, you can actually be really, really granular and say, no, it's literally this tiny piece of content I no longer want to cache, but I want to keep everything else. So cache tagging is going to be pretty awesome from the perspective of you know, keeping a, a warm cache on a busy site. Memcache module doesn't support it yet. So I suspect, and um, I have tried it, and it seems to be working. It works out of the box already, the Drupal 8 dev snapshot. So you can get sensible performance out of a Drupal 8 site um, without any um, caching in front of it like Varnish. Um, and you can do that with, you know, with the Memcache module already. Um, but I suspect that the cache, the way it's working at the moment, is a bit stupid, and that it actually um, if you make a node edit, for example, it will either clear the entire page cache or worse, it might not actually reflect the change at all. So it's worth keeping an eye on. It's great that they've, they've, they've made a good start. There is a working version of the memcache module for Drupal 8, but it needs work. I've not seen any movement on the Redis project. I don't know if anybody uses Redis instead of memcache for, for, um, for caching um, the Drupal cache tables. Uh, instead of MySQL, but uh, as yet, there doesn't seem to be any development there. What about database support? Um, there's another thing that changes because all of the standard um, stuff that you'd expect is there. Postgres is there. MySQL, they, they specifically name Maria as they did before. Uh, hacked it to SQL Server, you know, all, the, all the usual stuff you'd expect to support. Um, but the big change that, that, that Carol's been making a lot of fuss about is that um, it should finally be possible. I've not heard of anyone actually do this yet, but it should finally be possible if you're that way inclined to use a NoSQL database um, across the board with Drupal 8. Um, there's a, the, that's a link to a presentation that, that Carol gave about using um, Drupal 8 and NoSQL. You know, it's a, it's a tub he's been thumping for years. Um, he did a lot of work on it in Drupal 7. And um, we know from our work on views in core that he was quite keen to get involved in views in core to make sure that views for Drupal 8 would support NoSQL, and it does. So, um, so that's potentially quite exciting if you're interested in NoSQL as a database backend. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, PHP version, we're running PHP 5.3. Why not PHP 5.4 or 5.5? Um, as I said, basically Drupal 6, and let's, let's be fair, and let's not blame this entirely on Drupal 6. Drupal 6 and Drupal 7, there's no guarantees that Drupal 7 contrib is going to play nicely um, with PHP 5.4. Um, just out of curiosity, who here is hosting or running Drupal 7 locally or otherwise on PHP 5.4 or PHP 
Yeah, any problems? No? Okay, that's good to know. I mean, as I say, we're a bit stuck while we're supporting PHP, while we're supporting Drupal 6 because um, we, because we centrally manage everything, we don't want um, to, to stop supporting our Drupal 6 sites. Um, but yeah, it's good to know that Drupal 7 is running, running well. So, um, as I say, there's no question that um, those later versions of PHP are much faster. There's a little blog post I found by a, by a hosting company that I used to use. Um, just very quick and dirty benchmarks, but you can see um, in terms of response times and memory footprint, um, PHP 5.4 was a massive leap forward and uh, PHP 5.5 was a, a little step forward again. Um, so, yeah, if you don't have to support Drupal 6 sites, great, upgrade <laughs> if you haven't already, but sounds like a lot of you have. Um, so, does Drupal 8 work? Um, yes, it does. It's not ready, but you saw um, those crazy fools from Sensio Labs that are already running Drupal 8 on their live website. So, you know, that's, uh, that's uh, it's interesting that they've done that and, uh, and uh, it just basically goes to show that the, even though the product's not finished, it is usable um, and it is actually um, working. And as I say, with all the Drush tools working, things like that, we can finally start to crack on with updating our deployment scripts to actually uh, support deploying automatically um, Drupal 8 with Jenkins, which is exciting stuff. Um, on the performance side of things, um, there's still a lot to do, as I said earlier. Um, that's a link to a thread um, on, um, on Drupal.org uh, about Drupal core performance and a list of issues that are being tackled. Probably about 80% there now on the ones that are at the top, um, but new things keep coming up. So, you know, slowly but surely, um, the list of performance bugs is, is coming down. So I, I, when I first was going to write this talk, I actually said um, on Twitter, I'm looking forward to performance, uh, performance benchmarking um, Drupal 8. And uh, Catch tweeted me back almost straight away and said, don't do that. And, uh, and here's why. <laughs> um, now I have to admit I don't think this is entirely fair because this, this is actually running on a local Vagrant box um, and there's something weird going on there because uh, when I actually ran it on one of our stage Linodes with the same amount of RAM and theoretically the same configuration it was more like down here so I'm, I'm curious to bottom out why it performs so badly on the, on the local VM thanks um, and uh, I do want to get to the bottom of that, so watch this space. I will, you know, we will, we will be getting this into. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, this is seconds, page loads in seconds, and uh, this is just number of uh, number of requests. And so you've got um, yellow is Drupal six, green is Drupal seven alpha, uh, red is latest Drupal seven head, and uh, blue is Drupal eight head. Um, but. Um, yeah, this was done using Siege, by the way. Very, very simple test, just battering a node page over and over again. Um, so I don't know what was choking Drupal 8 up. As I say, other, other tests have indicated it's more down around here. But I don't think there's anybody expecting it to be as quick as Drupal 7. I know there was a lot of moaning when Drupal 7 was released that Drupal 7 was slower than Drupal 6, which it was. I mean, it wasn't a great deal slower. Um, but you know, these applications are getting more and more complicated uh, and, and with that complication comes a performance hit. Um, there's lots of tricks going on to hide the performance hit from a user experience perspective, you know, delaying load of things and that sort of stuff is, uh, is uh, important. But I think, you know, I think um, we should expect um, pages that miss the cache uh, that aren't being served out of Varnish or whatever uh, in Drupal 8, the way things are looking they're going to take at least 30% longer to load, I would be my guess. We'll see. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll nail it in the end. But, uh, but uh, yeah, just uh, it's interesting to note that it is looking slowish at the moment. So. Um, so I'm actually out of slides at that point. Um, as I say, without, with, with not sort of diving off into terminal and showing you a few Drush commands in action, I've, I've run a little bit shorter. But we've been here half an hour. Um, I've gone through pretty much 
everything that um, I managed to discover while researching and looking into hosting Drupal 8, um, what's changed and what's different. Uh, so yeah, does anybody have any questions? Didn't config export get deprecated or removed? Uh, it's still there. <coughs> <laughs> I, that, that, that's literally, I, I don't know, I missed that conversation. You may be right. Uh, if they're talking about deprecating it, that is literally like Drushmaster as pulled down like two days ago or something. Okay. So it is still there. Um, but I haven't, I've missed any conversation about that. So yeah, maybe it's a, a work in progress or a pull request waiting to be merged. Nothing else? No? Okay. Well, early coffee then, I guess. <laughs> Thank you.